So today we're taking a look at Synology's Disk Station DS918+. Plus. Now this is a four bay NAS system network attack storage that is ideal for small businesses but packs a punch as a home server. Now it does come with an Intel Celeron CPU guys that ranges from 1.5 gigahertz to 2.3. It does have dual gigabit ethernet ports in the back, uh, four gigs of DDR3L which can be increased up to eight gigs and the performance the read and write speed is 225 megabytes per second and 221 encrypted. Now what I love about this is that it does come with so many options to upgrade, you can increase your RAM, you can also install up to two SSDs for fast cache creation and this will actually save your space because you won't have to utilize the existing bays on your NAS. As far as storage, you do have the option to use the BTRFS and this is a next generation efficiency storage guys. It allows you a lot of different options from flexible folders, snapshot replication and automatic file self healing just to name a few. Now with all the apps and features, this makes for a great multimedia server. You can also use it as a surveillance station, collaboration suite, all in one server. It does have a lot of different features that are built in that's going to take more than one video to cover. As far as the specifications, the CPU is a 64-bit and like I said, the frequency ranges from 1.5 up to 2.3 gigahertz. As far as the hard drives, you can install 3.5, 2.5, as well as an N.2 SSD hard drive. The maximum internal capacity is 48 terabytes. That would include four 12 terabyte hard drives. Now this is a DS918 Plus, which means that you can add an extension bay, which allows you to add up to five more drive bays. And in total, this could give you a maximum capacity of 108 terabytes. As far as the RAID configuration, you do have a lot of different options. So you can uh, go ahead and use the Synology Hybrid RAID, which I'll be going into in a little bit and you can also use the regular RAID configuration that you're used to so a lot of different options here I will be putting a link in the description where you can check out the specs and details just so much they can do with this NAS now we'll be making additional videos showing you some of the great things they can do with this network attack storage so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing all right so let's take a look at this box first see what we have so C2 backup free trial so you get a free trial of their backup system you have the quick installation guide do have some keys here this is for the drive base I'll show you guys how that works in a little bit here's our power supply we have two Ethernet cables then we have some screws look like that goes to your actual drives so different ways to mount your drives in this NAS here's the NAS and let me go ahead and rip it apart from the bottom it's pretty heavy did come with four drives in here right now on the side we do have Synology this also doubles up as some vents now, same thing on the other side on the front we do have our drive base and this is where the keys actually come into play so we're going to turn it to secure it you see now it's locked and this will keep your hard drives locked and secured and prevent anyone from going ahead and just snatching it out of your system so we do have our four drive base here we have our power button we do have a USB 3 port further up we do have our status this one all the way through four so on the back you can see we have two large fans right here we do have our two Ethernet port you can go ahead and aggregate those together guys just to get faster speeds we do have a reset button right here pinhole do have an ESAT and this allows you to add additional drives to this current NAS pretty cool do have our power plug right here over to the right we do have our Kensington lock we do have another USB 3 port and on the bottom we do have our two M.2 slots and this enables for fast system caching so pretty easy to just pop it out we'll go ahead and slide in right there and you can add two of them in here so pretty cool feature and pretty cool that it's very easy to access on the back of the device you can see I have the Seagate. Uh, this is four terabyte hard drive, guys. Uh, these are designed for NAS systems. So if you guys don't know, you don't want to go ahead and get a conventional hard drive to put in your system. These are specifically designed and optimized to run on network attack store. I just want to give Seagate a big shout out for providing these for this review. These are the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS. These are the four terabyte, and I will be leaving links in the description as well. These are some of the best NAS hard drives that's available. So big shout out to Seagate. Big shout out to Synology again for sending these products out to me for review so the insulation for these are pretty straightforward let me show you guys how that's done so we have to do is just yank on this tab up top this little guy does have the holes to go ahead and fit in your hard drive let me take this one completely out All right, so once those come out have the hard drive right there have this guy 
have some rubber grommets right here all four corners put it back in and you want to go ahead and line it up with the hole and once you get it lined up with the hole guys pop that one on you want to do the same thing up top so pretty easy put in the hole put it on the bottom pop it on and you're secure now 2.5 is going to be similar you notice you got four mountain holes and all you have to do is check your drive make sure the connections are where they need to be and line it up on the holes I'm going to go ahead and flip it over like this you can see your holes are now lined up now all you have to do is put your screws in Line it up just like you did with the 3.5, push it in, and they're all set. Inside the NAS, you can see you have your four connections for your hard drives all the way in the back. Now, if you go up and look to the left, you can see you do have two RAM slots. So one is empty right now, the other one is occupied. And this actual stick is four gigs of RAM, so you can add some additional RAM just for faster processing. So once you have it connected to your network, all you need to type in is find.synology.com. Push enter and it should go ahead and go for a search. So make sure this is plugged into your router. Uh, make sure it's booted up. It takes about two minutes for it to uh, come up online and you should be able to find it with your web browser. So hit connect. Just agree to the terms. So it's going to ask you to create your admin account. So let's go ahead and do that. So you have set an admin account. Please complete the following steps. So let's go ahead and click next. So you have three options here to make sure your disk station is up to date. So install the latest DSM software automatically. Install the important updates of DSM automatically. Uh, download DSM updates and install them manually. So you have the option to create your quick connect ID. So this basically allows you to view your files when you're not at home. So once you get it all set up, you do have the option to install some of the recommended applications. Let's take a quick tour of DSM. And here we are in the interface. So now as you need your help, I'll remind later for this one. All right, so quick walkthrough. So access all your built-in and install applications up here. This is to discover more applications. So this is basically your app installer. This is your control panel, so you have all your settings there. And DSM offers articles to help you find information you quickly need. So click OK here. I'm just going to exit out of it. So let's do a quick walkthrough of the interface, get you familiar. So we have a widget right here, guys. Very nice. You can put it on the taskbar, but I do like it where it is. It gives you some good information and you can edit it to your liking. So for instance, if I wanted to add another um, widget, I can just click here, connect to the user. And you can see in the background, it shows that Triple M is connected. And this can scroll down, you can minimize it, maximize it, and you can go back in and you can just uh, disconnect that if you don't want to see it. So this is where I'm going to leave it. Just shown three critical things and these are all interactive. So if I was to click on my resource manager here, it will bring me into the, the resource monitor area. So show my CPU performance, my RAM, shows my network performance, volume, as well as my disk utilization. So useful information here. I do have a task manager as well. All right, so it shows you what's running, what services are running. And if you click on processes, it will show you the processes that are running as well. Up top, you can hide the widget if you want to. You can just bring it back up. You can search. You do have some options on the users. If you click on it, uh, personal, you can restart, you can shut it down. You view basic information. You can also log out. These are your notifications. So once um, apps become available to be updated or uh, maintenance are done, you will see notification and this will light up and just um, just notifying you that something happened while you were away. DSM help. You also have your file station, control panel and your package center. This is your main menu here. So if you click on it, you can see you have your control panel, some other applications. But once you start installing apps, they will start to show up in here as well. Let's go ahead and launch our package center. And within the package center, there's so many things that you can do. So you do have the option to set up an Active Directory server. You do have some antivirus programs. You have Cloud Sync, Document Viewer. You have an iTunes server option here. 
Java. You can set it up as a mail server, web server as well. And just scroll down to some of the common applications. So whatever you choose to use this for, chances are there's an option on here to go ahead and host that service. And I did choose to set up everything from scratch as far as my volumes and my storage. I do have four four terabyte hard drives in. Let's go through the RAID configuration right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is create. All right, so you do have options. This type of storage supports only a single volume but provides better performance high flexibility let's go next here and see what our options are for best performance all right so we do have a uh, different versions of raid raid 5 right now and these are raid configurations so let's go back i want to check out synology's hybrid raid configuration so let's click on that high flexibility click next so what's helpful is a Synology configuration for your RAID. So let's go ahead and pull that up. So I do have four four terabyte hard drive. So I'm gonna click on four uh, terabyte hard drive, gonna add them to here. All right, one, two, three, four. Then you scroll down, you kind of see what capacity you're supposed to have. So if you wanna do this, the hybrid from Synology, they do have two different versions. So hybrid one gives you one disc for protection, gives you 12 terabytes of storage. And um, hybrid two gives you eight. And you can choose a different one. RAID 1 will give you that much. RAID 5 bring you back to 12. And so in essence, RAID 5 and SHR are the same configuration. So you can go ahead and play with it with different size drives. Very useful tool uh, just to see what kind of storage you have, what kind of protection. And uh, just gives you an idea of what you're supposed to have during the setup. So I'm going to go ahead and select the SHR. Like I said, you can hit the drop down and you can go to RAID 5 or something else, uh, whatever uh, you decide. And good thing about this software, this interface, it gives you a good explanation of what um, protection is offered. So maximum number of this per RAID is three. And you can kind of see um, what the ideal situation is for this. So like I said, I'm going to switch it back. I'm going to use SHR. I'm going to click next. Here are my four drives. They are four terabytes per drive, but you can see with basic information that they do um, reduce at the 3.64, which is normal for most of you drives whenever you add them. So click next here. All right, it's gonna tell you that all the data on the disk will be erased. Are you sure you wanna continue? Click okay. All right, so my capacity uh, is gonna be 10 0.90 terabytes it's about what the calculator gave us if you think about it um, each this was 364 instead of four terabytes that's why it's a little bit lower than 12 so I'm gonna hit apply so before using the space on storage pool you have created the volume first you can go to your volume tab to create a volume after the storage pool creation is complete so hit complete okay here and what it's going to do, guys, is going to do a check uh, right here saying this um, parity consistent check is currently running. Our storage full one may be affected overall system performance, so just give it some time. So this is going to take a couple hours, but the good thing about this is that you can actually um, do some stuff while this is running. So you're not limited to just waiting for this to finish up. I'm going to head over to my volume. Uh, this will pop up whenever you change between your screens, guys. Just click yes. And from here, I'm just going to create a volume. All right, so custom is the only option there. Click next. Choose an existing storage pool, which is what we just created below. Hit next. All right. So it has it right here. It has the total size for you. Hit next here. All right, so the location. What we're going to do is just max it out, of course, just to take advantage of the full capacity. All right, so two different file types again. You have the BTRFS and recommended file support advanced features including share folder, snapshots, replication, share file quota, advanced data integrity, and DDSM. So um, do have another option, the EXT4, and EXT4 is widely used for Linux operating system. It can be easily migrated to this station running earlier versions of DSM. So I'm just gonna leave the default one or the recommended one here. Click next and just click apply. Right, so same thing that we ran into it saying that hey it's checking your disk make sure everything's good to go and it's going to take a couple hours but like i said before this is going to be running in the background and it is going to slow you down a little bit but it's not going to affect you doing other things within this interface so let me just exit out of here now now that i do have the drive set up let me go to my file station 
So it's telling me there's no shared folders right now. And if I want to go to a shared folder page to create a shared folder, click OK. So let me go ahead and click OK. I'm just going to name this one Plex Media. Click Next. I'm not going to encrypt that. I'm just going to click Next right now. So enable data checks on for advanced data integrity. Uh, file system healing and scrubbing available to ensure data integrity. So um, click on that. Enable file compression data checks so must be enabled first. All right. And you can select the quota for this um, share if you wanted to. So since I'll be using this primarily for Plex, I will be uh, switching it to terabyte here. And I'll be switching it to five terabytes. Hit next. Hit apply. Now we have the permissions um, page and you can select the users, groups, whoever, whoever you want to have access to that. So look at all users. So I'm going to give triple M um, read, write access and just leave it at that for now. I'm going to click OK. And there it is, Plex Media. So this is a folder I created. Nothing in there right now. So you do have that folder here. And uh, right now I'm going to show you how you can uh, connect to that folder via your PC or um, other devices just to get you started on transferring and moving files over to your NAS. So the IP address for my server is 192.168.139. So let's go ahead and we'll minimize that to connect to that. All we're going to hit the backslash backslash. I'm going to put an IP address. Just push enter. It's going to ask for your credentials. And you can choose to remember if you want to. And here are the two folders that I have that's available. So, of course, the Plex is the one that was created by default, uh, which I will probably be deleting later. Uh, Plex Media, double click on that. You see the recycling is there. And let's say I wanted to drop a file in here just to test it. This is the Plex Media server file that I downloaded earlier. So, let me go ahead and just drag that in there. All right, so that's in there now. Let me minimize. I'm going to open the server back up. All you have to do is go ahead and refresh. And there it is right there. So uh, basic setup of this NAS and basic overview. Uh, can't wait to show you guys the follow up videos on this. Like I said, I do plan on doing a complete Plex setup on this. Also, I wanted to show you guys how to hook your IP cameras up to this and get this up and running. So that's it for this video. Please drop a thumbs up if you like this video. If you'd like me to do something specific, please let me know. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.